Hi everyone, welcome to day two of our sew along for the Lynn Sport mini backpack. Today we'll be working on making the whole back part. So we'll be assembling this back pocket and we'll be making this key clip and the strap anchor, the handle and the straps themselves, as well as the rectangle rings on the bottom. So there's lots of little pieces to work on today. So let's get started. The first thing I wanted to show you was the rectangle ring tabs and the key clip because we do them the same way. So you'll want to fold these in half to find the middle. And then we fold each side into the middle. And we'll be sewing down each side before we complete this, but I wanted to show you how to do it before we go to the machine. So you leave it like this. A lot of times we fold it again, but this time we won't. We'll just keep those raw edges in the middle and then put our short ends together. Obviously we're gonna have to open it back up when we go to the machine, but we'll do that in a minute. This one you'll do the same way. Find your middle, fold each side into the middle, and then we'll fold it in half. And this one will actually be cutting in half and then putting our rectangle rings. It'll make two of our rectangle rings for that one. The last thing to show you is the handle. If you are doing a fabric, sorry, not handle, a fabric strap rather than webbing, um, I've used cotton here. So there's some instructions on how to do the ends so that it looks nice. And we take the strap and you can see I've already folded it to the middle and then folded it again. And we'll cut this at a 45 degree angle here. And then we tuck these in like that. And then this one gets tucked in. You can do it a quarter of an inch and then probably another quarter of an inch there. And this, see how nice the end looks now? Tuck this part in like that. And that side looks nice as well. So then when you fold it up, you don't have any raw edges there. And that will be the end of your strap when we're all done. But again, we'll go to the machine and sew down the whole long edges before this is complete. Another thing I wanted to show you, this is my 16 inch zipper. So we need to know how to install the zipper pulls. And so I've chosen this zipper for my front. And before I pull it apart, I need to look and see which side has one tooth above the other. Usually when you cut it straight across, you still have one tooth in front of the other. So this one, it's my left side. So I'll peel it apart and take my zipper here, slip it on one side. I, I It doesn't matter which side you slip on first. It just matters what it looks like when it comes out. And then... Slip your other side in and you can look down in there and see which side is on top. Make sure when you're pushing it up, my right one is above my left. So I'm going to pull it back out a little bit, finagle it until I have my left has one tooth above the other. Just like that and then slide it down. So this will be the zipper for my main pocket. So I chose a fancy one for this. You can do it again. For the eight inch zipper and i said nine inches yesterday i apologize but at least it's longer rather than shorter <laughs> this one again is on the left so just pull it apart a little bit and let me slip these on here this is something you'll get pretty good at we do four of these on this bag so get some good practice in there we go. And this is the zipper we'll be using today. This is your 8 inch zipper. So let's go to the machine now and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, at the machine now we're going to sew down the sides of, this is the rectangle ring tabs. So we'll sew down each side with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, 
So you have it looking like this. We'll fold it in half and then we'll be cutting that. So you have two. And then these will be for your rectangle rings. On your rectangle rings, a lot of them have a split on one side and no split on the other. These are one inch rectangle rings. I like to cover up that split so that you don't see it. So you can cover that up with your rectangle ring tab and then it's gone. We'll be using these a little bit later. So just keep them like that and set them aside for now. Do both. Okay, and the next thing is this little piece for your key clip. We'll do the same thing, sewing down each side. This one we don't cut in half, but we fold it in half the same way and you'll take your half inch key clip and slip it on there. You can put a rivet if you like, just for some extra decoration. I usually don't because I don't have a rivet press, but that's your key clip. We'll use that in a little while as well, so you can set that aside. The next thing we'll do is our strap. If you're using webbing, you won't be doing this step, so you can skip it. But I'll show you one. We just sew down each side. This is an easy part, but it's good to stay, make sure you find a place on your foot to follow so that it's even, you don't have a wavy line, because these obviously will be seen on your straps. This is cotton woven I've used here, and I did interface it with woven fuse, so just my regular woven interfacing. And I'll go down the other side as well. I'll do that later though. The next step is, so you'd go down both of your straps on both sides, but I've shown you enough. The next step is to take your interior slip pocket and we'll be making that. So you'll turn your interior slip pocket right sides together and we'll be sewing. So down one side and then in a little bit, start again, go to the side and back up. So we'll be leaving about a four inch gap at the bottom to turn it with. I'm doing a quarter inch seam allowance here. go in a little bit and back stitch to make that seam strong and scooch over about four inches and start again with a back stitch too step is to trim the corners so make sure not to get super close to your stitches you don't want to make a hole but you just trim these corners off a little bit that'll make it easier to turn so then we turn our pocket right side out make sure to press those corners out really well you want nice crisp corners Trimming them like we did will help. Okay. 
obviously I'll use the other side. It's a directional print, so. Okay, and then you'll grab your, one of your linings of your waterproof canvas, and we'll be top stitching this onto it. So I have mine here. And then, so we'll put it in the middle. Now let's top stitch the pocket first. You want to top stitch the pocket down about half an inch. And then I usually do a second row, just I just like the way it looks. You don't have to if you don't want to. Place the pocket three and a half inches up on our lining. So we have our waterproof canvas lining here. This is one of the full ones. Measure up three and a half inches and you'll place the open side. We'll be top stitching this. So place your open side at the bottom. Measure up three and a half inches and that's where you will place your pocket. And we'll just be top stitching this. I made my pocket a little bit longer when I cut, so mine's not quite three and a half inches. My pocket's a little bit deeper. So if you just place this on here, I usually don't pin it. It usually stays okay if you just lay it on there, but do make sure that it's straight and that it's even side to side before you top stitch it. So you'll be top stitching down one side, across the bottom, and then up the other side, eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. And I recommend back stitching on each of the top sides so that there's some extra strength there. I hope my corner isn't quite poked out there. And you want to make sure that this pocket, you have your um, inside your edges pointed in and it's nice and even there we'll be going over that in order to close the hole and how I do this pivot is leave the, your needle down lift your foot and you can pivot that way it's a good way to get a nice clean corner we'll be using it in a little bit. Our next step is to take your main back piece. We'll be working on the back now. So take your main back piece and you'll lay it right side down and then you want your lining piece. I've grabbed my vinyl here. You'll have lining for this if you cut according to the directions. For my pocket, I'm doing two of the waterproof vinyl because I used a knit and so I didn't want it to be super thick. So for my pocket on the back, I'm using two of the waterproof canvas and the instructions call for an accent and a waterproof canvas. So mine's a little bit different. If you have the accent and the waterproof canvas, make sure you've grabbed your um, accent here. So you'll lay these right sides down, both of them and take your pattern piece and you'll be tracing out the rectangle that's on it and make sure that you do these opposite of each other so on the out the um, exterior piece I have it on this side I'll flip it over and do the opposite on my lining piece and so I'll trace out this rectangle and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, I've drawn out my rectangle on my main piece. 
So then we'll be just cutting down the middle of this box and making two V's at each end. So let me draw kind of what we're aiming for here. So you'll be doing a V at one end all the way down and then a V at the other end. to start in the middle and then work out and do those V's at the end. All right. Now you can iron this. I actually like double-sided tape. It works really well. So I have double-sided tape here and I'll just put this around all four edges of my little box here. This helps it stay in place so that my zipper install is really nice looking. I'll show it to you in just a second. So I have double-sided tape around it all. I just did the outside of the box, so then when you take it off, you're peeling. Then you can just fold this up and it sticks really nicely. So we'll do that to all four sides. You can iron this, that works too. Whatever works for you. I find the double-sided tape helpful, so that's what I use. And pull these out on each side. Make sure that you don't have any waviness on your on your little hole there, it, it will be seen when you have your zipper. The next part is to grab your 8 inch zipper that we put our zipper pull on earlier. So we have our 8 inch zipper and you want your zipper to be pointing up so that when it's fully zipped up it'll be at the top. So make sure that you have your top pointing to the top of your piece and you'll lay this. I again like to use double sided tape to put my zipper in. So I'm going to line the box again with double sided tape. This time I'll just do the two long ends. I don't need to do the short ends this time. Lay your zipper in the top at the top of your panel. Make sure to get it nice and straight. Okay, you can even flip it over, make sure you like how it looks. Looks good. Okay, so then take your lining, and we've done the same thing with the lining. Remember, we did it mirrored and I went ahead and used the double sided tape on this too, but it's kind of coming undone. So I'm going to press it back down. Obviously with the waterproof canvas I can't iron it, so I'm going with double sided tape on this. Okay, And this one we want to put wrong side together on the zipper. So you can see we have the right side with the nice zipper there, wrong sides, and this we have the pretty side like that. Okay, so I usually throw a couple of clips on here to make sure the edge stays in place as we sew. I don't want that curve getting away from me. Okay. What we'll be doing is sewing right around the edge with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You shouldn't need your zipper foot, but keep it handy just in case you do. You 
can move that zipper pull out of the way as you go so that it doesn't cause any issues. a little bit to move it. You can lift your foot as long as your needle's down. It doesn't hurt anything. Right. So now our zipper is installed there. Here's what it looks like on the back. So we're done with that part for now. The next part is we'll take our strap anchor piece and we'll be folding the sides of this in a quarter of an inch and it's a good idea to iron this so I'm gonna iron it I'll be right back okay so I've ironed my strap anchor piece you fold these in a quarter of an inch and iron and actually one of the sides which will be the bottom so if you have a directional fabric pay attention to that so I'll do that here sometimes you can kind of put it halfway off of that and it'll help it stay down a little bit. I don't think mine's going to this time so I'm going to put another layer underneath. I want this to stay in place so I'm going to put another layer of double sided tape underneath each side so that I, I just don't want to hassle with it. And with the knit, it doesn't quite lay as flat as the, the wovens do. Alright, so this piece is the strap anchor piece. And we're going to be using this to hold our carrying handle and our straps in place. So we measure down, I like to use my ruler. Measure down one and a quarter inches from the top. And make sure it's even. You don't want it to be crooked one way or the other and you lay your anchor strap right where your ruler is. Make sure that it goes all the way across. Mine's not quite, okay, there we go. So it should reach all the way across. And then since we have that adhesive on there, we can stick it down. Make sure it's even all the way across. Okay, now we'll take our carrying handle that we made. Well, I guess we didn't actually make the carrying handle. I forgot to show you how. For our carrying handle piece, we do the same way as we do the straps. So we fold it in half and then fold each side into the center. and fold in half again and that's our carrying handle and we sew down each side just like we did for the strap have this long strip and you want to make a loop in it like this and you'll put that right in the middle with half an inch in between in between the straps so you should have about a half an inch gap in between there okay. I like to put my seam there's one side of the seam I like to put that toward the center. I feel like it's a little bit less noticeable that way. So half an inch in between and then I usually use these long clips because they can reach all the way down there to hold this in place. 
you'll need your straps and you have if you've done cotton you have one end that we turned and one raw end on both so your raw end you'll want to cut at a slight angle which is about 30 degrees so if you have a rotary mat you can do exactly 30 degrees or you can estimate sometimes the rotary mats have um, marks on them you want to do these opposite of each other because they're going on opposite sides of the bag okay. and you'll tuck your straps in right next so I have the angles here you'll tuck your straps in right next to your handle and slide it down in there and we can use more of these big clips to hold it in place and we have this clip here too our strap so we slide that right in next to there so you have your angle you want it to angle out toward the edge and that just helps it lay a little bit nicer on your back when you're using it so that it doesn't have a twist okay now you can well we're gonna sew across first but you can put rivets in here too if you'd like but we're gonna sew across with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then a quarter inch below that too To make sure your straps look even so the angle is roughly the same but you don't want to get too close to this edge or you'll run into some issues in the final construction we'll do a second row a quarter inch down from the one we just did before you do this line i would make sure you like how everything is lined up your handles and your straps. Okay, we're gonna do the bottom of this, but before you do that, make sure you stick your key clip in. We'll do this two inches in from the side, and you just slip this under your adhesive on your strap there. So it's two inches in, and we'll do the same thing, an eighth of an inch in, from the bottom this time, and then another quarter inch. trim the ends of your anchor, your strap anchor here. So I usually turn it over to do this so I can see a little bit better what I'm doing. And just trim them to match the shape here. Okay, so we've finished our back and I realized that I should have put my other pocket piece on before we sewed on the strap anchor. So if you're watching this without having sewn first, put your pocket, your other side of your pocket, the one that's cut in half, on top before you sew your strap anchor down. Um, in this case, since I've already done it, there's a little bit of a lip right here. I'm going to sew the top of it 
to that little lip and nobody will ever know. sure it's even there when you do this. You could do it this way even if you haven't sewn on the back yet. It's kind of a nice way to do it to make sure it all is even there. Okay so I've gone ahead and put the other side of the pocket on so when I open up my pocket it's right sides. We can see both of the right sides in there. Okay. Now the last part for today is to take your pocket that we made earlier and take the back right side down and put these wrong sides together and then we'll just be basting this in place. So go ahead and baste that and that's the last step for today. So you've completed the whole back and you can go ahead and post a picture of this on the Facebook group to be entered for today's prizes. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.